Thrill seekers on the roller coaster at Six Flags that used to be called the Shockwave got a whole different kind of shock today when the ride stopped, leaving riders stuck. Charlotte shut down indefinitely after a father discovered this frightening crack right after his daughter rode the roller coaster. They bargained for after a stoppage on a roller coaster at Movie World. It was triggered after a flyaway there scarf. There's been an incident on the slider this afternoon involving two carriages coming together on a low section of the track. In Arlington, a woman has died after falling off of a roller coaster. Six Flags Over Texas confirms the woman was riding the Texas Giant. Roller coasters are incredibly safe. In 2022, an annual report by the National Safety Council found that across 437 parks in North America, a total of 1,390 injuries occurred, 36% of which happened on roller coasters. Additionally, only 0.73 reportable injuries occurred per million rides. Meanwhile, a similar report by the NSC found that there were 143 vehicle-related deaths per 1 million people in 2021. There is a significantly greater chance to die in a car crash or be struck by lightning than ever being injured on a roller coaster. Obviously though, a bunch of statistics may not mean much in the face of a 200 plus foot tall steel monstrosity. So let's find out how amusement parks actually keep the ride safe for everyone to enjoy. If I've fooled you so far into thinking I'm a roller coaster expert, you'd be wrong. I'm just a nerd. Which is why I've brought in a real expert to help explain how these rides work. Uh, my name is Ryan. I go by Ryan the Ride Mechanic on YouTube. Um, I was in the amusement industry for 14 years straight. I uh, worked my way up from a base level mechanic into a supervisor, uh, through a lead into a supervisor position. And uh, it was a really great time. I really enjoyed doing it. I had a, quite a passion for the industry. Now that we have an expert in the house, let's talk about maintenance. Every single day, mechanics arrive hours before the park opens to inspect the rides. We start about 5 o'clock in the morning. Places that have many, much more roller coasters, they will actually start the night before. As Soon as the park closes down, they start their inspections and work overnight. When we start off at a ride, we always start, pretty much we go out, we lock out the ride, make sure it's not, nothing is going to move on us. Uh, safety first in all aspects. We typically start by going into the infield to making sure the uh, track and structure, all that stuff is intact, nothing's happened. But then we move on to the uh, brake inspection where we look for tolerance in the, the brass and uh, to make sure the gaps are correct. On to the lift to make sure the chain's in good condition. Then we start checking out the trains themselves. We're looking for things like delaminated road guide and upstop wheels, things that have worn down. And then we move the trains out and we work on the restraints to make sure they're all functioning properly. And then we check the queue line and everything surrounding, fire extinguishers, all that, safety signage. And then the last thing we do is go through the operation of the ride where we do safety checks like a block check where we try to Every morning we try to purposely run trains into each other to make sure that the ride won't let that happen. And then we check all the other things like uh, the unlock restraints and motor functions and everything else around the track like that. Rides also undergo a variety of other inspections throughout the year. Every seven days there is a weekly inspection that comes out. That's more in depth, that's got more things to check, more measurements, more greasing along those lines. Every month, there is a monthly inspection that comes out where it's even more things to do. And a lot of times we kind of nibble away at those bigger inspections while the smaller ones are being done. A lot of rides have a quarterly or a three month inspection, which involves much more uh, like further out. You need man lifts and cranes and things like that to do the inspections, a, a six month inspection. And then you get into the annual. Uh, most of the time when you refer to the annual, we typically, that's when we talk about rehabbing a train where we pull a train off and actually tear it all the way down and then inspect all the parts and pieces and put it back together. Where I was, we had three more inspections that had to happen. There was an insurance inspection. That was the important one. We had to have an independent third-party company come out. We had our state, which is local 
jurisdiction inspection they had to come out and do everything and look over the ride and check our paperwork and operations and everything like that themselves they're there for a very long time and then we had the company i worked for they sent out their own engineers to the park as well and they inspected all the rides Roller coasters are huge machines, and while general maintenance and inspections help prevent issues, sometimes things just happen and a ride stoppage occurs. So the general is that the ride goes down. It's typically something like a computer fault, PLC fault. So we go out there, and the first thing to do is acknowledge just the ride in general, the situation at hand, what's happening. Once we find out what's going on, where all the trains are, where all the people are, all that other stuff, we pretty much go back and then we just try to reset the fault. When you're dealing with a ride that has five to 600 individual sensors communicating with each other and all over the ride at the same time, you're bound to get one eventually that doesn't work right and it gives you a rogue signal. And that's where a lot of the computer fault comes in. The most ride calls are simply just a fault once and they don't do it again afterwards. So we, we unload, we reset, we run some cycles on it. We have to log it down a lot of paperwork that tells the crews what we did. And it also tells a uh, state and insurance and those people what's been done. And then we're able to call the ride back up afterwards. Now we know what happens to these rides before the park opens. Great. But what about when the coasters are operating? How do these rides actively remain safe as hundreds of trains full of guests are cycled throughout the day? Um, we start with the fabrication of the ride itself. The track and structure is overbuilt, very far overbuilt. The issue has come up recently of the lifespan of a ride. Well, rides don't really have lifespans on them. These rides, these steel coasters especially, they've They've stood up for 20, 30, 40 years in some cases, and they're still going just fine. Well, that's not by accident. I mean, they, they built them that way to make sure they can handle the stress the entire time. Um, the older ones handle them typically better because they weren't that sure what they were doing with the engineering, so they went much thicker than what they needed to. A lot of rides, you can take a train, get it up to the top of the lift hill, and then you can start removing pins that hold the entire thing together. You could take the wheels off completely. Like you could do all that stuff and strip that roller coaster down, push it over the lift hill. It will stay on the track because it's designed that way. Then we move backwards a little bit and we say, well, ride operators are your next major line of defense. Operators can see things that the ride can't. So we give all the ride operators typically in the station, we give them probably at least a ride stop, if not an e-stop. So everyone has that ability to look, see something, and stop the ride. Despite what sensationalized news stories or articles may say, a coaster coming to a controlled stop, either on the lift or on the brakes, means that, in a roundabout way, it is functioning as intended. And that's one thing the rides are designed to do. They are, every step of the way, they're designed to stop. Anytime it's not sure of something or if it gets conflicting information, doesn't care what it is, it shuts everything down. And that's the safest thing to do in these situations is it's, it's stop. There's lots of policies and procedures in place. Some of them put there more recently than others uh, to prevent you from doing things like resetting blocks with trains occupying them. That was one big thing that came out of the uh, Smiler accident a bunch of years ago. In 2015, two trains collided on the Smiler at Alton Towers. While the ride was experiencing downtime, operations put a new train into service to keep up with the large crowds that day. They dispatched the train empty as is normal operating procedure and it valleyed due to high winds. The next train, loaded with passengers, stopped on the lift because the ride detected that the first train had valleyed. Maintenance, unaware that another train had been added to the track, overrode the system, causing the trains to inevitably collide. After the accident, Alton Towers and Parks Globally updated their protocols to prevent this kind of accident from occurring again. Where I worked, we had just recently built a control system shortly after the Smiler. If a train valleys out on the track, it would completely lock down the processor and would not allow it to do anything for, I 
believe it, it was either three or four hours straight. So we, we kind of learned from that and built our own uh, safeties into the system. The last one is with the PLC. The PLC or programmable logic controller of the ride has typically three safety checks that it does before it makes any move. Processor A runs the program and says, turn on my valve. And then processor B runs an alternate program and says, yes, I agree with processor A, run the valve. And then a third comparison check says, yes, my A and my B program agree with each other. I'm going to allow the signal to go through to operate the valve. So you actually have three forms of redundancy in most of the commands inside the PLC. But uh, that's that's basically it. You got your you design, mechanical design, electrical safety backed up on top, and then operators watching everything on top of those two. Roller coasters may have hundreds of sensors, a robust computer system, and human operators monitoring the ride at all times. But there is one danger that can't be entirely accounted for by all of this. What is the greatest hazard that can jeopardize the safety of a ride? Actually, the number one thing, funny enough, is guests. Guests are the number one thing. They are the thing that the operations have to worry about. They're the thing operate that the engineers have to worry about. Guests are the number one thing that will mess up a ride the quickest because people inherently continue to do things that the manufacturer does not intend for them to do. Most of the time when you hear about amusement park injuries or fatalities, a lot of the times guests were doing things they weren't supposed to be doing. Uh, a couple of fatalities where guests lost their phone, lost their hat, and they jumped over a six foot fence to go. And then they not only jumped over the six foot fence, but out of this entire ride where this train only passes this low spot once every three and a half minutes, they happened to go right when it was doing that. In that little tiny 1.2 second window as the train was passing that low spot. Three times, three different times that I can remember, people were killed doing that. And it is just ridiculous. Uh, people in general, I, uh, you hear it a lot, and I, I say it a lot, they check their brain at the gate. Like once they walk in through that front gate, people just switch their brain off and things that are kind of common sense and you wouldn't normally do, people try to do it. Hey, I'm gonna to try to get myself out of this restraint. I'm gonna to try to get myself into that area where I'm not supposed to be. It's, it's quite amazing. So people I would say are the number one hazards to rides in general. Remember, safety is a two-way street when you're at a park, it is your duty as a guest to follow the rules because they are there to help ensure the safety of yourself and others. If you have any concern about the safety of a ride, notify an attendant. Alongside your participation, extensive maintenance and redundancy makes riding roller coasters one of the safest and most thrilling ways to spend your day.